All right, everybody. Uh, welcome back. So this will be the first tutorial for the WebSockets with Pythantic and Fast API. We're going to move kind of quick, um, keep these videos as short as possible. So the first thing we're going to, we're going to do is go to the um, repository I provided, and we are going to clone um, into our local folder here. So we'll do a git clone, paste in um, that URL, and then we will cd into um, WS with fast API. And then at this point, we're going to want to uh, check out the base structure branch. Um, I've provided a branch that has um, the basic structure of the project um, provided for you. Um, I've just uh, removed a lot of the implementation. Um, that way we can kind of work through uh, those implementations together in this tutorial. So uh, first thing we're going to do is git check out base structure. And that will switch us to that um, base structure branch. And then if you look here, um, we have a basic structure here with the app and then uh, requirements.txt, but we are going to use a virtual environment um, to install these dependencies here. So we'll do a Python dash M venv dot, dot v -E -N -V, and then um, that will create our Python virtual environment. And then to activate the virtual environment, um, on Windows at least, you do um, dot venv scripts activate. And then um, to install the project dependencies, you do uh, pip install dash r requirements txt. All right, so with the uh, dependencies resolved here, we're going to cd into app. If we look at the structure of the project here and we look at um, in the app directory and then server, and we look at the JavaScript here, we can see when a client um, connects, we are going to be sending um, this JSON string, which will have the event connect. So we can go ahead and implement that server side now. And that, <clears throat> and that is going to live um, in the models directory. So if we go to server, utilities, models, and then the models.py, you can see this, um, this class that inherits from base model. And we can go ahead and do the base implementation for that. Um, so a connection is going to um, essentially assign a client ID to the client that connects so that we can um, obviously track any subsequent communication between the client and the server. Um, and that connection is actually also going to store the WebSocket object for the server. So uh, we're going to define a client ID. It's going to be of type UUID. And that is going to be equal to the field function from Pydantic. And one of the cool things Pydantic provides um, is a way to initialize a field value when the object is created. And that is called a default factory. And the default factory um, as a parameter takes an uninvoked function. So the uninvoked function that we are going to pass it is going to be uuid.uuid4. And that is just um, from the uuid package, which generates a uuid4. And then, um, as I said, we are going to also store the WebSocket object on the connection class here. So that is going to be type WebSocket, which comes from FastAPI. And then one thing we do have to do in order to allow this um, base model object to accept these, this uh, WebSocket type is use um, the config dict from Pydantic to <laughs> configure the model to allow arbitrary types. So that's done by defining model config. It's going to be equal to config dict. And we need to set um, arbitrary types allowed to true. That's all we need for the connection class here. This event type um, enum is going to define all of our events. So we can go ahead and define um, the connect event to be equal to connect. And then um, the next thing we're going to work on is the connection response payload. So we can define that event type as well. So that will be connection response to be equal to the string connection response. When we respond to a client after its um, initial connection, we are going to respond to the client with its client ID. That way, all of the, um, all of the communication that the client makes um, after its connect event, the client can identify itself to the server. So the client can tell the server, hey, I'm, you know, my client ID is blah, 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 blah. And um, I want to do X with my data or whatever. So we'll, uh, the connection response is going to have a field client ID and it's going to be um, of type UID. Just to showcase some of the cool things that uh, Pythantic gives you for free, 
we're going to use the field validator um, decorator, which essentially allows you to run some kind of validation when the object is initialized to validate that the fields, um, or one thing you can use it for is to validate the fields are of a certain type or that they exist or whatever. So we'll do at field um, validator, which looks like I need to import that validator. Um, I think that's, yeah, it needs to be imported here from Pydantic. This is going to be a, a class method because it's going to exist unchanged on all of these classes um, if there's more than one. And we will define um, validate client ID. And that is going to get the class and the thing to be validated. And the validation check we're going to do is if not is instance the um, class we're validating and the um, thing we're validating it against, which is UUID, then we are going to uh, raise a value error and then just describe that error here. So um, client ID must be of type UUID. And if it passes that validation, we are going to just return value. And that will um, validate that when this is created, that the client ID is of type UUID. So all WebSocket communication is going to be built off, off of this WebSocket, base WebSocket event um, object. So we can define that now. So um, all base WebSocket event objects are going to uh, have an event field, which will be um, one of the event types that we have defined here. And then the data field is going to have to be, right now we've only defined one, but the data field is going to have to be one of these other Pydantic um, base models. So right now we only have this connection response payload, but later on we'll have this stats payload as well um, in stats event. So the data is going to have to be, for the time being, um, of type connection response payload. And then we will, um, any of these base WebSocket events are going to have a timestamp generated um, when they're created. So we will define the field as time, and that will be of type date time, oops, date time. And we will use the um, default factory again to generate this date time upon initialization of this object. So that will be field and default factory. And the function that we're going to pass it will be date time dot uh, now. And at this point, I think we can go ahead and work on, yeah, the manager class here. So when we initialize the manager class, we need to have a way to track um, our clients. So we'll do self.active connections. It's going, to, it's going to be a dictionary. And then the values is going to be a string key with a connection as the value, which is one of the connections from the models, or is the connection from the, from the models here that we just defined. And then that is going to be initialized as an empty dict. And then um, upon connection, we are going to await WebSocket accept. And then we will create a connection um, after that. So connection is going to be equal to a connection. And the WebSocket parameter is going to be passed our actual WebSocket object. And then um, the ID will be generated from that default factory. And so then we need to add that connection to our active connection. So self dot active connections. And the uh, key is going to be a string representation of our connection dot client ID. And then that value is going to be our connection object. And then we are going to need to um, respond to our client. And we will do that by using the connection response payload that we defined already. So connection response payload is going to be equal to our connection response, which I think I need to import still. Um, yes, connection response payload. And then we need to pass the client ID into the field client ID. So connection client ID. And then we are going to uh, respond to the client um, using the base WebSocket event that we defined. So the WebSocket response Response is going to be equal to the base WebSocket event. And to create that object, we need to define an event type is going to be equal to the uh, connection response. Oops. Event 
connection response. And the data is going to be that connection response payload. And we are going to need to send that um, as a uh, string representation, um, which will be you know JSON that we can send over you know the network. So to do that, we are going to await WebSocket dot send JSON, and we are going to send the WebSocket response, but as JSON. So model dump JSON, and that's just one of the cool things that Identic does for you, just out of the box. We can go ahead and print that here just so we can see it. So we can print um, the WebSocket response dot model dump JSON, just so we can see it. And then um, the way I have um, implemented this, we're going to need to return um, the connection. And we should be able to um, just work on the fast API side now. So if we go to main, we can go uh, to the WebSocket endpoint, which is here. Um, and we're just going to need to create that connection. So connection is going to be equal to await WebSocket manager. I think I call it WebSocket manager. Connection manager is what I call it. Connection manager dot connect. And then the uh, the WebSocket that we get from Fast API, which is my WebSocket, which is defined here. And we just we can actually print this connection so we can see it in the terminal connection. And then um, we can we need to also um, define our uh, front end HTML payload, um, and that's that's accessed here. And in order to do that, we just need to return templates dot template responses or template response. And we're going to return index html and in the request so request to be request and that should be it we should be able to test this now i believe i think that it should be all right so in order to run this we're in the app directory and we just do python yep dash m server main oops got an error here we got an error here it has to do with our field validator so if we look at that um, oh yeah, I forgot to pass this, um, the field <laughs> that it's going to validate, and that will be client ID. Let's try to run that now. Um, another error, um, and it looks like something to do with the UUO, I see. So this client ID is going to have to be type UUID. Try again. All right, and then we can go to um, the stats endpoint, and then check out our dev tools. And yep, here we go, we've got our... Um, our response from the server is the event connection response. The data is going to have our client ID, which is this string representation of the UUID for object created in Python with our time field, um, with our date time object. So if we look on the server here, we have um, our connection response, which was printed in the manager class, I believe. So yeah, that will be this um, WebSocket response model dump JSON. It's this, and then our connection object here it's printed in main. Yeah, right here. So this is our connection object. And this is what it looks like, um, you know, printed in the server. So cool. Thanks for uh, tuning in. Um, hopefully this wasn't too horrible. So next time we'll start, we'll probably go ahead and implement the rest of the models here. And then um, start forming the, uh, the data that we're getting um, from PSUtil to send to the client. So cool. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time. Thanks.